This presentation will demonstrate the location of the muscles of the upper arm or the upper limb. Let's start off by talking about the rotator cuff muscles. Uh, these are stabilizing the shoulder. The tendons of these four muscles help stabilize the shoulder joint. And we can remember them by the acronym SITS, S-I-T-S. And so supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor, subscapularis. Of those three, the first three are on the posterior surface of the scapula. And so all we had to do was take off the trapezius muscle and we should be able to see all of those muscles. To be able to see the subscapularis, we would have to turn over the arm and because it's on the anterior surface of the scapula. And so here we have our scapula. This is the spine of the scapula. And so this would be the supraspinatus muscle because it is above supra, the spine, spinatus, so above the spine. Then the muscle right below the spine would be the infraspinatus right here. Then here, actually all of this is infraspinatus from the, from the spine all the way down to the corner, the angle of the scapula. Then underneath those, we have the teres minor. And remember that the word teres means round, and minor tells me it's going to be the smaller um, of two muscles. So we have supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor. And then if we turn around, we can see the sub scapularis. So you notice we're now on the anterior surface of the body. They had to cut away the ribs so that we could see this. And it attaches here at the medial border and then over on the humerus. The, um, these three, supraspinatus, infraspinatus, and teres minor, all attach. Their insertion is all on the greater tubercle of the humerus. And the subscapularis attaches to the lesser tubercle of the humerus. Now here we see some muscles um, in the brachial region. We have the biceps brachii, brachialis, brachioradialis, and coracobrachialis. And all of these names are going to tell me either where they are or where they attach to. So first we have the biceps brachii, and biceps means that it has two heads. So we actually have a long head and a short head. You uh, don't have to be able to identify which is which, but biceps brachii and the fact that it is in the brachial region. So biceps brachii. Then we have the brachialis, and if I were to remove the biceps brachii, I would be able to see the brachialis muscle uh, right underneath there. The brachioradialis begins on the humerus and it's going to come all the way down and attach at the end of the, the distal end of the radius, so which is why it's called the brachioradialis. Now the coracobrachialis is going to begin at the coracoid process of the scapula and then attach to the humerus, so coracobrachialis. So this is on the anterior side of the arm. If I turn the arm over, then I have the triceps brachii, which means that it has three heads. In this picture, we see one, two heads, but there's actually another one kind of underneath here that we can't see. So, but we know that this is on the posterior side of the arm. Now in this picture, we can also see the teres major right here. Now remember that the rotator cuff muscles were the supraspinatus, infraspinatus and teres minor, but then there's also this teres major. And one of the ways that I can distinguish between teres major and teres minor is looking at the insertion. All three of these muscles of the rotator cuff insert at the greater tubercle. If you notice, teres major goes behind one of the heads of the triceps brachii and attaches actually to the anterior surface of the humerus. As we move into the lower portion of the arm, the first one that I find is the palmaris longus. So here's your hand, and so I'm looking for the tendon of the muscle that goes all the way straight down to the palm. And so that's this muscle right here, palmaris longus. And then on either side of that, I have flexor carpi radialis and flexor carpi ulnaris. So here's the thumb. I know the radius is the bone on the thumb side. The ulna is the bone on the pinky side. 
and these flexor carpi, so here we're going to have flexion at the wrist, and it's the muscle of the uh, on the radial side that does that, and we have one on the ulnar side that does that. So I look for these three in relation. This one here we, we want to consider as part of those brachial muscles because that was the brachioradialis. Now in this picture we can also see the pronator teres, and remember that the action of pronation is to turn the palm down, and so when this muscle contracts, it pulls the palm face down. If we turn the arm over, the first one I look for is the extensor digitorum. So again, the digits are going to be your fingers, and so I'm going to look for the muscle that has a tendon that goes all the way down to the fingers, and so here is the extensor digitorum. Then I'm going to look for the other extensor muscles, and notice that on the posterior side of the arm they're all called extensors, and on the anterior side they were all called flexors. So the extensor carpi ulnaris would be on the ulna side, and we know that that's the pinky side, so I'm looking for that extensor digitorum first, and then right to the side of that, to the pinky side, I see the extensor carpi ulnaris. Then I have the extensor carpi radialis longus and extensor carpi radialis brevis. So they are going to extend the wrist. They're both on the radialis side, and one is long and one is short. So here, this one that starts at the humerus and comes all the way down would be the longus, extensor carpi radialis longus, and actually kind of right in between the extensor carpi radialis longus and the extensor digitorum would be the extensor carpi radialis brevis. It's kind of hard to see it in this picture, but it's there. So here we have another flexor. We've turned our, our hand over again, and we have the flexor digitorum superficialis. So let's kind of orient ourselves a little bit. Here's the um, biceps brachii brachioradialis. I look for the palmaris longus first. Okay, then I have the flexor carpi radialis, flexor carpi ulnaris, and then underneath the tendon of my palmaris longus is the muscle flexor digitorum superficialis. The reason, so it flexes the digits or curls up the fingers, and the reason it has the term superficialis is because that there is another one that is going to be deeper than that, and that would be called the flexor digitorum profundus.